Hi friends, it's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to very <laughs> belatedly go through the books that I read in the month of July. So let's get to it. I read 19 books. Of those 19 books, 11 were adult, one was YA, seven were middle grade, nine physical, six digital, and nine audio. I read 5,294 pages with an average of 170 pages per day and 294 pages per book. In total, my average rating was 4.5. Point three. Let's start at the beginning. The first book that I read was actually an audiobook that I read with my nephew on the way to the cabin for the 4th of July weekend. We listened to The Boxcar Children by Gertrude Chandler Warner. This book is very nostalgic for me. I loved this book series when I was younger and the fact that he chose it and wanted to read it was so, I was so excited. So Kit and I listened to this together and it was a lot of fun. The Boxcar Children, if you don't know, is a wonderful series about four siblings who parents pass away and they're afraid to live with their grandfather because they don't know him. So they run away and they end up living in a boxcar. And things happen and it's wonderful. The second book I finished was The Forest of Vanishing Stars by Kristen Hermel. I started this right before I left on vacation for the 4th of July, and I finished it my first night at vaca on vacation. I was not expecting to finish it, but holy cow, this book is so propulsive. Um, this was the book that I was looking most forward to um, in the second half of 2021 in my mid-year book freakout tag, and let me tell you, it absolutely lived up to the hype. Um, so when Yona was two years old, she was kidnapped by Jerusa, and Jerusa raises her in the forest for many, many years and then passes away. Once Jerusa has passed away, Yona is responsible, is left alone in the forest of Poland, um, trying to survive. She is well equipped in, to do this on her own. However, she also craves human contact and wants nothing more than to not actually be alone. This book reminded me a lot of Island of the Blue Dolphins. It reminded me um, of Alone, by Megan Freeman. And it also reminded me of The Walking Dead because <laughs> you see these groups of people doing everything, everything that they can to escape this monster that is chasing them into the forest. And they have to figure out if they trust each other or not. And tell me that's not like The Walking Dead. I dare you. Anyway. The next book that I finished was Three Madges and a Margarita by Annette Marie. And this is a paranormal, cozy mystery. I don't know that I would call it a mystery. It's kind of, it's, I don't know. Um, my sister recommended this series to me. It is very funny and it's a lot of fun. Um, Tori is really broke and she's searching for a job and she comes across a flyer for the guild looking for a bartender. So she goes to the guild and she walks in and she starts talking like she wants a job and they give her one, not realizing that she's not paranormal. And so technically something should have stopped her from entering the guild, but it didn't. The guild is a group of... um 
like mystical people. Mystical. I shouldn't say paranormal. Mystical. Things go from there. The next book that I read, I listened to and read um, a physical copy was Wings of Fire, number one, The Dragonette Prophecy by Tui T. Sutherland. This book was recommended to me by one of my students. It's his absolute favorite series in the world. And I just don't love fantasy, especially fantasy with dragons. But when one of your students wants you to read a book, you go and try the book. And I really did like it. It was very interesting. Um, I found it to be very bleak. There's like a ton of dragon murder going around, going around, um, so it's just, it's really bleak. And I had to keep on reminding myself that I was reading about dragons. And yeah, but the Dragonettes of Destiny are four, five, five dragons that are supposed to be in charge of stopping, putting an end to the war that has been going on between um the dragons for years and years since the death of one of the queens by a savage, a human. The queen in each society of dragons is challenged by one of her daughters near the end of her reign. And then if the daughter wins by killing their mother, her mother, then she gets to be queen. And there's always it always goes down the female line, which I kind of think is cool. So because the female sand dragon was killed by a savage, there was it wasn't clear which one of her daughters was supposed to take over. So all of her daughters are basically um, trying to get the power over the sand dragon kingdom. And it's a crazy ride. It ends on a cliffhanger, and I did go on right away and pick up the audio for the second book, which is The Lost Air. And this one takes place in the Sea Wing Kingdom. Um, and the main queen is Queen Coral, who has lost many of her potential heirs. They've just disappear um, mysteriously. And the Dragonettes find their way to the Sea Wing Kingdom. One of the Dragonettes happens to be one of the heirs to the Sea Queen, Sea Wing Kingdom. It's quite a ride um, as well. Both really good. I'll probably continue on with the series, which will make my student the next book that I read was Christmas at Holiday House by Rayanne Thane. I read this for the Bitter Single Ladies Read Romance book club and for Cosweek. And I talked about this in my Cosweek wrap up. And so I'm not really going to say more, much more about it. But it was a nice little holiday romance for me. So it hit the spot. The next book I listened to was Wild Swan by Patty Callahan. This is a fictionalized account of Florence Nightingale when she's a teenager before she becomes a nurse. So she was, she felt called to the profession of nursing and her parents were very much against her having to have any kind of profession at all. And so she goes behind their back and does some research and looks into it and shadows some doctors and things like that so that she can eventually become a nurse, which she does, obviously, because it's Florence Nightingale. Um, it was really interesting. It's an Audible original, which means it was only, only available in audio and it's only available through Audible. So I am glad that I read it. Um listen to it. It was really interesting. And Patty, Can Patty Callahan can really just take a historical time period, true story, and just 
turn it into a wonderful, wonderful um, fiction narrative as well, keeping a lot of the history intact. So it's really cool. The next book that I read was Half Minute Horrors by various authors. It was an anthology of short little snippets of um, scary stories. I enjoyed it. I also talked about that in my Cause Week summary, so I'm not going to rehash it out too much, but it was enjoyable. The next book was The Tenth High Heels Mis Cozy Mystery Suspect in High Heels by Gemma Halliday. Also talked about this in my Cause Week wrap up. It was a lot of fun. I love the series. I'm going to read every book in the series that I come across. It's really fun. I just love it. Next, I read From Beer to Eternity by Sherry Harris. I loved this book as well. It's a cozy mystery. I talked about it in my Cause Week wrap up. This is the fourth and last book that I talked about in my Cause Week wrap up. So um, I loved it. It was available on Kindle Unlimited, which is great. The downside is the second book is not available on Kindle Unlimited, even though it just came out. And I do want to continue the series. It is available on my um, Hoopla through my library. So I'm probably just going to be listening to it there. Uh, next, I read Peter Pan. Of course, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I did a vlog about my experience reading and watching the Peter Pan movie. I really enjoyed that experience. It was a lot of fun. And I'm really glad that I finally can say that I read Peter Pan. It is a classic and it deserves that title. So that was Peter Pan. Next, I have another cozy mystery, and that is Crumbs of Passion by Georgiana Daniels. This actually I got through Hidden Gems um, Advanced Reader Copy System. They are more independent authors who... Um, make their books available for readers to um, for readers to review. But this book is about Casey Crum, who is fired from her job in LA and returns to Oregon. And when she's in Oregon, she um, gets to her new rental and finds the dead body of her ex-boyfriend from 15 years ago. Because they had a pretty explosive breakup 15 years ago, she is the number one suspect of the police. Very crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, she was also on the road when the mo mo murder happened, but the police are not willing or showing her that they're willing to look elsewhere. So she takes it into her own hands to try and clear her name. Um, it's not too crazy because you find out that they're also giving other people the idea, the idea that they're suspects and the same thing is happening to them. So it's not too, too crazy, but there's a lot of suspension of belief. Um, but I really liked the characters. The characters are really interesting and fun. Really did enjoy my reading experience. It was just a little bit out there for me. Um, especially the fact that her name is Casey Crumb, but I loved the pun in the title and just thought that was really cool. So <laughs> do with that what you will. It's a fun one. Next, I listened to Mistletoe and Mr. Wright. This was my cho another choice that I made for Christmas in July, and it is by um, Sarah Morgenthaler. I'm really enjoying this series. It takes place in Moose Spring. Is it yeah, Moose Springs, Alaska. Um, this is the second book, and they're so funny and completely out there, but just a really fun time. This one follows Lana, who basically has purchased most of the town, and her her family her family has purchased most of the town because she loves it, and um, the rest of the town doesn't like that she's basically their landlady. So they don't like her, but she loves all of them and has a really hard time with the fact that they all hate her. And she is really good friends with the character, the love match from the first book. So we get to see a lot of them, which is really fun to see that continued story. And 
it's really nice to see Lana find somebody that really balances her out as well. So it was a really fun story and I really liked it. The next book that I read was The Last Lecture by Randy Posh and Jeffrey Zaslow. Uh, this book, if you have not already read this book, you need to read this book. It is a wonderful look at life and all of the wonderful things that you can learn when you look back, realizing that you have very little time left. It's fabulous and I loved it so, so much. The last 20 pages really got me. So tears, tears will happen if you are like me. Um, even if the first part of the book tricks you into thinking you're going to be just fine. So there you go. <laughs> the next book that I read was the Cozy Escape Book Club pick, and that was Murder, She Knit by um, Peggy Earhart. Again, this is a cozy mystery. Um, it's about Pamela, who is a widow. She runs into an old friend, Amy, the night before she hosts the Knit and Nibble Club, where they all get together and they just work on their knitting projects and they talk. And she invites Amy to join them in the club. And it sounds like Amy's going to join them. And that night, Amy does not show up, which Pamela thought was kind of weird. However, when she goes outside to feed a stray cat, she finds the body of her friend Amy, who has been stabbed with a knitting needle. Um, I enjoyed this book um, for what it was. It is definitely not my favorite cozy mystery in the world. I thought that... Pamela was a really judgy main character. I didn't like her as much as I want to like the main character in the cozy mysteries that I read. And so that kind of bothered me. Um, and I wanted to see more of the cat. I didn't see a whole lot of the cat. So that made me sad. The next book I finished was an ARC that came out on August Third, and that was Dead Wednesday by Jerry Spinelli. I have mentioned this in my ARC video. This book is about Worm, who is in eighth grade. And one Wednesday, all the eighth graders are assigned the name of a young person who has passed away within the past year in some way that is preventable. And um, they're treated as if they're dead for the rest of the day. This is so much a suspension of belief because it's totally unorganized how this happens. However, I found a lot of really cool talking points within the pages of this book in such that I really do think that I would like my eighth graders to read it. And talk about it. I wouldn't want them really to read it on their own. I just don't think you can get as much out of this book if you don't talk about it afterwards. I went to online to find other books to try to, or other reviews to try to process how I was feeling about the book. And I just really, I would have really benefited from having somebody to talk to and um, it's definitely a book that I would want a group of students to read, not an individual student, which that opinion was actually um, shared with Kobe Sharp, who I can um, link his review down below as well. But his review really helped me process <laughs> how I was thinking about this book, and he said it quite well. The second to last book that I read was Keeper of the Lost Cities by Sharon Me Shannon Messenger. Shannon Messenger. This is the first book in the Keeper of the Lost Cities series. I am very excited to continue on with the rest of the series. I buddy read this with um, 
Krista from Books and Jams, and we are going to continue on with the series because we both just loved it. It was a lot of fun. And then finally, the last book that I finished was The People We Meet on Vacation, or no, there's no The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I had a lot of fun reading this book. Um, it kind of gets some mixed reviews, but oh my gosh, I had so much fun. I liked going back in the past and seeing all of their previous um, vacations. I loved going to all the places that they went to. It was just so much fun. Um, if you haven't heard of this, our main characters are Alex and Poppy. Alex and Poppy were both best friends went on vacations together every summer two years ago a line was crossed and they stopped speaking to each other and poppy decides that she, the last time she was truly happy was when her best friend alex was in her life alex is literally one of the best humans in the world um he is always thinking about other people, and although misguided, he's always making decisions based on what he thinks other people will want. It's a beautiful, beautiful, um, he's, a, he's just a wonderful person. I liked him a lot. Poppy kind of annoyed, annoyed me um, because she didn't realize how much he did to please her, but I loved it so much. Actually, just kidding. The last book that I read was The Battle of the Ampere by Richard Paul Evans. This is the third book in the Michael Vay series. I do enjoy this series. Um, I did not like this one as much as the first two. This one was quite a bit slower. There wasn't as much action, but the action that was there was pretty important to the story. I can't get too much into it because this is the third installment, but Michael Vay is the main character and he is joined by a bunch of kids that have electrical powers and some of his friends from high school. So, this is actually the last book that I read. This was my one YA. Sorry, I forgot it. So I would love to hear what you read in the month of July. I would love to know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I really enjoyed my reading in the month of July and I'm very, very excited um, about the books that I'm continuing to read in August. It is, I know, pretty late into the month already, and I've read some really great books already. So I hope that you found a lot of time, or at least some time, to read during the month of July. I hope you're finding time to read now. I hope that you have a wonderful book. And as always, until I see you again, happy reading. Bye.